in this video I want to share my experience with the DJI Focus Pro LiDAR on the Lumix camera with a Lumix autofocus lens. Hello, my name is Tim and if YouTube recommended this video to you, then you probably already know a lot about the DJI Focus Pro, because I'm probably right in the end of the curve of those videos, right? <laughs> Well, um, I'm not one of those early reviewers and I didn't receive this unit for free. I bought the DJI Focus Pro for my hard-earned money to use it with my fully manual Blackmagic camera and yeah, L-mount manual cine glass. Little did I know that it could also work with autofocus lenses. Autofocus lenses, as has been shown, don't really work with that lighter system because these autofocus lenses most commonly lack hard stops. There is a manual focus ring and linear focus throw in with this camera here. However, there are no hot stops. Thanks to a um, partnership between Panasonic Lumix and DJI, the Focus Pro now works with this camera, with this native Lumix lens, without the use of the focus motor. By directly plugging the camera into the Focus Pro grip. This is a rather narrow use case, but it might be interesting for users of older Lumix cameras like the GH6, but also other compatible models. The full frame S1H works in the same way. If you are owner of a newer Lumix camera, then it's probably not so groundbreaking for you as it is for us users of those, you know, contrast-based autofocus cameras. But this video could also be of interest for those who are looking for a budget-friendly solution. Um, if you think about it, a used GH5.6 with a new DJI Focus Pro creator combo consisting of the lighter focus motor and grip costs not as much as a new GH7. But now let's dive into some of the actual pros and cons of using the DJI Focus Pro without focus motor in collaboration with a Lumix camera and autofocus native Lumix glass. One thing to really point out is it works with zoom lenses across the zoom range. If you have a manual zoom lens that you would like to use with the focus motor, it better be parfocal, otherwise it won't really match. Uh, the alternative or the, the, the workaround would be, if it's not parfocal, to have maybe three lens profiles at 12, 25, 35 millimeters, and then swap lens profiles depending on which of the three focal lengths you, you're using. You know, imagine how cumbersome that is. You also cannot really achieve like a, a focused kind of zoom in or zoom out. Uh, that is not an issue at all with the DJI Focus Pro Lumix combo. No lens calibration is required to do this. Even backlit like this, with the sun blowing everything out, switching between 12 and 35 millimeters, the lighter works excellently. Absolutely fine. Another very important benefit of using the LiDAR in combination with an autofocus Lumix lens is the lack of focus motor noise. I cannot explain how groundbreaking this is for that setup. With manual lenses, you constantly have the motor kind of humming in the background. And yes, you can remove it in post. And yes, you can find a workaround like I introduced in my previous video, mounting the LiDAR unit below the lens and the shotgun mic on top of your top handle or something like that. You better be careful not to record focus motor noise, which means that for manual lenses with the focus motor attached, there's no way you can actually put a shotgun microphone on your cage. To be fair, the GH6 native autofocus is not that bad. It's somewhat usable in some use cases and in the higher frame rates. However, when it comes to things like face tracking and trying to track a face while moving the camera around, it is rather useless. But you see, as soon as I move around, it just loses focus in comparison. Oh, that's, that's the test I wanted to show, like it just doesn't keep you in focus. It can be used like for things like product shots, where you have 
opportunities to retake a shot or so otherwise for run and gun situations it's rather useless i would say this is where the dji lighter brings all the benefits because it latches onto faces like nothing i've seen in my experience before it's amazing there's actually only one use case where i would use the native autofocus in the gh6 and that is when it comes to close focus uh, distance the lidar unit here has a close focus of 50 centimeters that's a half a meter that's a lot just if i zoom into 35 and i'm relatively close you really have to be careful with the close focus distance this lens here, the 12-35, has a minimal focus distance of only 25 centimeters. So I can get much closer to my subject with this Lumix lens, but not with the LiDAR here. With this switch, I can just switch it to autofocus, disable the LiDAR autofocus, and then get closer. Again, for a product shot where you're just going like this, it works sometimes. But tracking phases, as you will see, is not really an option. This is now 120 frames per second. How many frames Ooh. do you have? <laughs> How many? It doesn't have any, in this mode, any face detection. So you're completely blurred. Oh, now it got you. You know, no matter how this develops in the future, the LiDAR will always be independent from, you know, processing in your camera. This is where the LiDAR really, really shows its strength. Now, with the LiDAR, it can be twitchy if we don't latch on to some object right if you don't track a face or so but that's not the point of that use case the use case of the lighter with the gh6 or any other compatible lumix camera would be things like face tracking that's why i think this unit here uh, the gh6 or any lumix camera compatible lumix camera in comparison with the dj focus pro creator combo is especially relevant for videographers of weddings or event shooters live streamers things like that where it comes to, you know, you don't need the close focus all the time, but mostly track faces, then this is your deal. Now let's come to a major downside of using the DJI Focus Pro with autofocus lenses by Lumix. That is, you lack the manual override feature that many reviewers have been raving about and me included. I love it with the manual lenses. You have this haptic feedback and the focus wheel grip at the tip of your finger. You can, you know, interrupt the autofocus and control it manually and you, you feel it, you know, in your hands and it has a certain resistance. You feel the motor and that's super useful. That does not work at all. They use a red frame. I'll link his video, his review in the description below. He has a very good video out on showing how the problems play out on using the manual focus for this autofocus lens it's practically useless speaking of negative points there is another very negative aspect of using the dji focus pro with lumix and native autofocus glass that is the startup sequence you have to power the camera first then the lighter dji grip and then you have to confirm usb tethering and then the distance between lighter and focal plane of your camera has to be manually input because it's not saved. Yeah, you don't need to calibrate the lens, that saves time, but the startup sequence is kind of cumbersome. I am someone to turn my camera off and on a lot. I turn it on, shoot, turn it off again to save battery. With the lighter, that doesn't really work because I need to turn on the camera and the lighter. I mean, in reality, it's not that time consuming but don't expect to turn this on in seconds be able to shoot that's why i think again wedding videographers event shooters live documentation or streaming that's the kind of use case for this autofocus lens with lighter on a lumix camera um, because that would be a use case where you just leave the camera ro rolling for longer periods of time and yeah the resulting problem of this is of course battery power. I use the normal um, GH6 batteries. I have a V-mount but not compatible yet with this but I'm considering a V-mount solution maybe where I can just clip the V-mount on my belt or something like that to power this. The Focus Pro Grip is also kind of power hungry so getting spare batteries for the Focus Pro Grip for longer shoots uh, or V-mount solutions would be recommended. 
So I used to hold my cameras like this, right hand on the grip and then my left hand, especially with larger lenses, on the lens barrel and then I would focus manually all the time, right? Since I own the DJI Focus Pro Creator Combo, my left hand is obviously on the Creator Combo grip. So to me personally, if I hold the camera like this, it's instantly kind of front heavy. I lack the support that I have here. Now with the Micro Four Thirds camera and Micro Four Thirds native lens, it's not really a big deal if I hold it like this, right? With that heavy black magic and the DJI Focus Pro grip and, you know, heavy lenses and a V-mount battery, you, you feel the strain in your back. I am, as far as thinking, of investing in an easy rig for that reason alone. But again, sometimes you just don't want to have the heavy gear. You use the GH6 Micro Four Thirds to get it done. You know, that's the beauty of it. I almost sold it. Okay, so in explaining the use of the DJI Focus Pro with this Lumix camera and autofocus lenses, I also aim to show the use case with Micro Four Thirds in particular. About half of the compatible cameras are Micro Four Thirds cameras. These are crop sensor cameras with a two times crop. And this is where the, you know, Micro Four Thirds system really shines with these native lightweight lenses. This is not the fastest lens and yeah, some of the newer Lumix autofocus lenses for micro four thirds, the f1.7, 25 to 50, or no, 10 to 25, 10 to 25, 25 to 50 lenses, you know, they are super fast and good for low light, but again, they're like so big and heavy that I think I would actually prefer this 12 to 35 at f. 2.8. Especially with the GH6, you can up the ISO to like 6400 in a low light situation. I think it's perfectly fine. But if you really need the fast lens, uh, then you can also uh, just add one of those autofocus primes. They're really affordable. If you absolutely want a full frame camera, not a micro four thirds, then you can of course buy a lightweight version of a capable camera in full frame with the S5 II, right? However, consider if you have a run and gun scenario in mind for your shooting style, then you would probably want to have a zoom lens. But um, again, full frame, full frame zooms. Compared to this, you have that front heavy kind of bulk of glass. I don't know. I mean, that's the main reason for me to stay invested in micro four thirds. What I see in this collaboration between DJI and Lumix is the same light that Lumix once shone on the mirrorless world in, you know, bringing amazing features to ordinary users, you know, and, you know, professionals alike. Features that even some Sony cameras and others today are still missing. I mean, only days ago, Sony released a firmware update for the FX3, finally offering shutter angle. Wow, applause. I mean, I had shutter and angle in my first Lumix camera, the GH5, which I bought five years ago. And, you know, it's been there before that. Open gate shooting, we've had that. And Sony reserves for, for its Venice. I was among those who pre-ordered this camera on the day it was launched because I thought I had to have it. It was just so beautiful. I didn't care about the autofocus so much at the time because no other Lumix camera had it and it was just something that I accepted. And you know, I was at the time also kind of proud to focus manually only, like driving a manual car, of course. But once the S5 II was released with face detect autofocus, I felt left behind. I felt cheated almost, you know, and that kind of broke my trust a little bit in Lumix. and. It's just so sad. Imagine you invest in, in an expensive camera and then not even a year later, it is already outdated. Yeah, and then the G9 II came with face detect autofocus and that now we have the GH7. So that fact alone, that it, my GH6 didn't have face detect autofocus, that fact alone made me not like my GH6 anymore. And it made me forget what a beautiful, capable camera this is until I tried it with the DJI and the DJI Focus Pro grip with this camera not only made it highly usable, breathing new life into my GH6, but it reestablished my trust in this creativity that I see in Lumix, in using a Lumix camera. Lumix in a nutshell is known for not forgetting its users of older cameras by bringing 
constantly new features uh, to older models through firmware updates. And now in this collaboration with DJI, Lumix achieved to make me love this camera again. And it sparked so much joy shooting this with this odd automatic uh, autofocus 12 to 35, you know. There's a time and an occasion for full frame and my black magic, but you know, I almost forgot that there was a time for micro four thirds, and um, I'm so glad I didn't sell it. This, my friends, is no longer for sale, and if you're looking on the used market, it's probably a good time to look now before other people catch up on this. Thank you.